Well, good afternoon, ladies and people. It's good to see you here, and I know by golly you come to learn a little bit about the Pennsylvania Dutch. Now, we talk kind of funny. See, what we, what we say sometimes, we mean it to come out right, but it comes out, he knows fiddle. You know, the front end comes last or something like that. Be because when we translate the Dutch into English, it don't make, you know. I take, for instance, uh, we say, throw the horse over the fence some hay. <laughs> well, now that sounds funny, eh? But that's the way we talk. The Dutch would be, schmeißt the gal when ich hoi über the fence, well. And that's what makes when you translate it in the English, it comes out backwards. Not like, for instance, we say, make the light out. But that ain't light. You should say, out in the light. See, it's using the right kind of English. That's very important. Take one of our friends here in the, in the group. He has a daughter, just came home from college. And uh, she was explaining to Pop, she says, Pop, the yard looks so wonderful nice this year. The flowers are so nice, the grass is so nice. How in the world did you do it? Well, he says, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of hard work and 24 loads of manure. But well, she didn't like this very much. So she waited until Pop went out in the barnyard. Then she says uh, to Mom, she says, Mom, why don't you teach Pop to talk a little different? She says, why, what's wrong? He talks all right. Yeah, but she says, I asked him how he got the yard so nice and the grass so green. And he says, uh, lots of hard work and 24 loads of manure. Why can't you get him to say fertilizer? <laughs> Mom says, just shut up. It took me 25 years to get him to say manure. <laughs> As you notice everything today here, we are all dressed up in our best because we knew you'd be coming from, well, from different foreign countries. <laughs> Some are here from New Jersey. <laughs> Some are here from New York State. I know we got a gentleman here from Connecticut. <laughs> That's one of the English, New English states up there. Uh, they got state up there called Maine, but we don't have anybody here from Maine today. Uh, mostly maniacs from up there. <laughs> but I come here all dressed up, special for this occasion. They told me they're having all these strangers here. I wasn't to come looking so sloppy. I was to dress up, so I did. I bought myself a brand new sea soccer suit. And they told me this thing's gonna wear like iron, and I believe them. It's getting all rusty already. And then I got a new hat from my wife for a present. Well, I guess it was a present. I, I came home unexpected the other night and this was on the table. <laughs> it must have been a present because when I come in the front door, I heard the delivery man go out the back. The other day I was up to York, Pennsylvania, and uh, it just so happened that my neighbor lady found out I was going up to York, Mrs. Griesemer. She's one of them old Wunderfitzes, you know. She says, I understand you're going up to York. I says, yeah, that's right. Well, she says, do me a favor, will you? I says, I will if I can. What is it? Well, she says, I have a boy that lives up in York, and he hasn't written me a letter for 20 years. I wish you'd look him up and tell him to write to me once. Well, I says, I'd be glad to do it. I says, where does he live? She says, I don't know exactly. All I know is he lives up there somewhere in a little white house. That's all I know. Well, I says, that ain't much to go on. Well, I says, what's his name? She says, Donald. Donald Kriesemann, but we only call him Don for short. Well, I says, I'll try it. So when I got up to York, I stopped outside the town there at one of them gas stations and I asked the man there, I says, do you know where is a little white house? <laughs> I 
He says, yes, there's one around in the back. <laughs> and I went back and by golly, there it was. <laughs> and I seen a fella coming out, putting on his coat. I says, are you done? He says, yes. Well, I says, why don't you write your mom a letter? Of <laughs> course, maybe he had no paper. And you know, I'll never forget when I got my letter from Uncle Samuel, it was written to me special. It said, your presence is requested. Will you come? Or must we fetch you? <laughs> well, they come to fetch me. I says, you can't do this to me, I got connections. So, they got me by the connections and took me. They took me down to the dock center where they take all the men and as soon as I walk in, some fellow hollers, he says, I am young enough, more. look what the wind blew in. I says, the wind nicks, it was the draft. <laughs> then they took me in the room there and a fellow asked me a whole lot of dumb questions. And then he says, uh, born? Well, I said, sure, I was born. Do you think I was hatched? He says, where was you born? I says, U.S. He says, you mean United States? I says, no, upstairs. <laughs> then he says, uh, what are your parents' names? Well, that was easy. I knew them all my life. I says, Mama and Papa. <laughs> but I says, they were always fighting. From morning to night, this was nothing but fight, fight. He says, I don't want to hear that. He says, what I want to know is, who was your father? Well, do not matter, I says, that's what they were always fighting about. <laughs> he says, what's your occupation? I says, I'm a joiner. He says, what in the world is a joiner? Well, I says, I go in a hotel, and when a fella comes in and buys a drink, I join him. <laughs> it's cheaper. So I went into the next room, and as soon as I walk in the door, some big fat sergeant hollers at me. He says, take off your clothing. Now imagine something like that. I never even saw that fella before. I was never introduced to him. He says, take them off. I says, no, I won't. He says, take him off. I says, no, I won't. <laughs> and the funniest thing happened, I took him off. <laughs> there we stood, 75 men was nothing on but our shoes. <laughs> Imagine that, no clothing. No place to put our hands. Seventy-five men all in a straight line. And I looked down the line. Right there I made up my mind Abraham Lincoln is crazy, all men are not created equal. Why, some had feet that big. <laughs> and then two doctors get a hold of you. One on each side. One looks in one ear and one looks in the other. And if they can see each other, you ain't in the army.
And then one doctor, he made a mistake. He put his hand on my shoulder and I was warm yet. He says, you're in class A. He says, I don't want it. I says, I want class B. He says, what do you mean class B? I says, that means I want to be here when they go and I want to be here when they come back. <laughs>